Welcome to the Notion Pro. My name is Jared, and today we're going to take a look at how I manage tasks in Notion. Now, I made a video about this over a year ago. I've been using Notion for just about two years, and it's really changed my life. I started using Notion because I wanted to be able to create a system that worked for me, and I couldn't find any other software that achieved that. There are a lot of great options out there, but none of them achieved all the things that I was trying to do as uh, someone who's, who owns his own business and uh, is kind of has to self-motivate and do everything, um, I need a structure. I need a way to manage my tasks and get things done. And if it's not recorded somewhere, sometimes it just gets forgotten, especially those tasks that you need to, to schedule out or put off for a little while. So I built a task manager in Notion, and I've it's ebbed and flowed how I've utilized it with different apps or even just solely using Notion. So I'm gonna talk about how I use it now and show you how it's set up. Keep in mind that I have templates available for you as well. So if you want my setup, you can go down to the link in the description below and access my templates uh, for free. But I do wanna show you how it's set up so that if you use the templates or decide that you wanna set something up on your own like this, you have uh, some insight into how I'm utilizing it. So I use the task manager that I have built to manage tasks for business and for personal uh, life, the different areas of my life. I have several different businesses and projects that I'm working on at any given time, and I have four children and lots of activities going on outside of work as well. I also have clients that I need to bill for the time that I spend on tasks that I'm doing for them. Sometimes projects are a, a flat fee and so they retain my work so that I could produce a project for them. But other times there are hourly or by 15 minute increment uh, tasks that I need to complete and then at the end of the month I bill that client for that work. And my task manager can manage all of that. I can also tag, I can also attach tasks to clients. And so if I want to go into a client and see all the tasks that I've completed for them or tasks that I have yet to complete, uh, see their projects, all of those things, it's easy for me to do that. All of these databases tie together. And also with projects that I'm working on, projects have a lot of tasks. And so with those tasks, going to those projects, I can go and look at a project and see the status on it, see where I'm at, see what tasks I need to get to. And it's just a really nice way for uh, accessing all of that information. But on the day-to-day, -day, I spend most of my time in my task manager looking at the tasks that I have. And so we're gonna take a look at that. This is the default view that I use for my task manager. It's just the standard table view. And I have a done column, the task name, due date, the area, status, priority. I can uh, attach it to a client. So this is a linked database option here. I have tags. I can check off whether or not I have invoiced the client for that particular task. I record the amount of time, and then there's a bunch of other fields uh, over off to the right that we'll go into a little bit later. So when I add a new task directly into Notion, it's very easy. I just click New, and I go in and give it a title. I can set a priority for it. I can set a status for it, next up, in progress, completed. I can set a due date for it, and it's important to set a due date for it because the creation date or the updated date that is automatically recorded is not sufficient. And with a due date, I can also set reminders, which is great. Um, then I can choose an area. And so I have several different areas that I might be working on, and I need to clean this up a little bit. Most of these fit under my projects these days, but I do have different areas in which uh, I'm working on things. And so if I want to look at all of the tasks that are for Hill Media Group, for anything that has to do with Hill Media Group, my digital marketing company, then I can look at those tasks. If I wanna look at all of my personal tasks or household tasks, it's easy for me just to go and filter out all of those other tasks by, uh, by using a filter method, but I can only use a filter method because I chose which area of my life it fits within. And then in the tags area, I sometimes you have tasks that 
are similar that are in different areas of your life. For example, if I had some emails that I needed to get back to, maybe some of those emails are for Hill Media Group, maybe some of those emails are personal emails. And so you, I, I wouldn't be able to use just an area of my life as, a, as an organizational structure there. I also need to tag the task type, I guess you can say. And so this is called tags, but it also could be used as the word type. So what type of task is it? Um, I can assign the task to either myself or I have an employee and so I assign some tasks to my employee. I could put a web address in here. So if it's a website or something that I need to reference or look at, it's really easy for me just to go to that web address. Uh, also, I use the email app called Spark, uh, which is an email app that's available for Mac iPhone, iPad, and Android, and they keep saying that they have a Windows version in the works, but it's not yet out. But one of the cool things that you can do with an email, a specific email, is generate a link to it, and then when you click on that link, it takes you right to the email. I don't know how many hours over my lifetime I've wasted searching for an email, not getting it just right to be able to find the email because maybe I forget the person who sent it or whatever and I spend forever trying to find an email. You know, you can flag your emails but then you end up with a whole bunch of flagged emails. You can sort them and all of that good stuff but that just takes a lot of time. It's easy for me just to create a link in Spark and drop it right in here and then when it's time to respond to that email or utilize whatever information was in that email, it's one click away. I also track the amount of time that I spend on tasks, and then there are a lot of linked databases down here below where I would attach this task to a client, attach it to a client project. Um, if there were file associated, I can add that right here really easily. Um, and one of the reasons that I add it right here, as opposed to adding it down into the page, is because if I ever wanted to export my tasks into another tool, something outside of Notion, it's most likely only going to work well if it was able to be exported in a spreadsheet form. And I want to have all of that stuff in a spreadsheet and not have the pages be exported separately. I, probably not something that you have to worry about, but it's something that I've considered. I then can uh, attach a task to a contact, one of my own projects, my content calendar, daily log, notes, podcast, there's a whole bunch here, even a few that I need to clean up, uh, such as my 2020 goal tracker. The interactions calendar is a pretty important one because most of the interactions that I have uh, in my work life result in some form of tasks being created. And so I record the interactions that I have and then I also uh, attach them to the tasks so that if I'm looking at a task and I'm thinking where did that task come from oh it came from that interaction back uh, you know a week ago when I talked with so-and-so about their needs and their issues with that project and so boom that they're right there and it's very easy for me to um, to see all of the context for that task so the task manager also has several different views. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but uh, several of them are a table view and they filter out different bits of information based on what I need or don't need. For example, one that's pretty important is viewing um, just uncomplete tasks that are uh, these tasks that I still need to work on still. I have tasks of high priority, which sometimes when my task list gets kinda long, it's nice just to be able to look at those tasks that have a high priority only. Um, if I go down and look at completed billable tasks, this one changes the view. It's still a table view, but it changes the view. And instead of showing the done category over here with the check boxes, it shows whether or not I have invoiced for those. And this helps me remember what I need to invoice for. You know, I've probably done several tasks and gotten them done really quick and then forgot to even bill the client for the task. It can happen, and I'm sure it's happened for me, but now it doesn't happen because I have this system in place. And then of course there are the ability to go to like a board view and view them in a board view, which to me isn't as helpful because most of my tasks end up in one board, So uh, and, and I have a smaller amount of tasks on other boards. 
Um, and then I can also go and view by due date just by looking at the calendar if that was something that made a little bit more sense for me. And this is showing all tasks, including completed tasks, by due date on the calendar. And so I've got different views that I've kind of played with, um, including when I have a client that I know I'm going to be doing a lot of tasks for over a long period of time, um, having a view that's specific just to that client. So it filters by the client, which makes it easy for me just to look at those tasks, which I can also do by going into the client view, but um, in the client database, but I don't know. It's just another way of doing it. So how do I manage getting tasks into Notion easily? Well, lately I have not been using Notion for that. I did a video that I've already posted on this channel prior to this video on how to use Todoist with Notion and that outlines exactly how I utilize Notion uh, with task entry. Uh, I use Todoist because Todoist is extremely easy to use. I can easily go into Todoist and just click plus and put something like film task management video today at 9 a.m. and then attach it to a project and hit add task. It goes off super easy. It took just that amount of time for me to give the task a name, for me to give it a date, for me to give it a time, and for me to attach it to a project. Now utilizing Zapier, which connects Todoist and, uh, and Notion, I, it's automatically going to place that task in my task manager. Sometimes it takes about five or so minutes for it to show up in the task manager because Zapier's connection to Todoist is listening for new tasks. It grabs that task and then it pushes it over to Notion and that takes a little bit of time. So probably within five minutes that task is going to show up right here within Notion and then I can check the task off in Todoist and then at the end of the day I usually come back into Notion and I clear out all of my tasks in Notion and I connect other things like perhaps when I entered that task into Todoist, I, I obviously can't attach that task when I'm in Todoist to my interactions calendar. So there's some cleanup work that I do in Notion a little bit later, which is the reason that I use Notion. I use Todoist for its quick task entry. I use Notion for having the tasks along with all of the context that helps me stay organized. And so that is how I utilize Notion and how I manage tasks. The tasks, the majority of the time, are attached to a project. And so in another video, I'm going to talk about how I'm using Notion as a project manager and show you that process as well. Uh, but already those templates are available on the website. And so if you click the link down in the description below, you can get access to those templates and start using them right away. My Notion course on mastering Notion helps you become a pro at Notion. And with that course, we actually walk through the process of building a contact uh, database, a project manager database, a task database, an interactions calendar, and all of those things so that you could build a system for organizing and structuring your life. So if you're interested in actually learning how to do it rather than just downloading a template and installing that, then I invite you to click on the link down in the description below to check out the course. I'd love to have you over in the course. Um, I think it's a great resource. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.